Thank you for joining us. Uh, this joint LF Networking LF Edge webinar is actually the third in an existing series of LF Edge webinars and represents the inaugural LF King webinar. So welcome. Today's speakers include Arpit Jashapura, the General Manager of Networking Edge and IoT here at the Linux Foundation, and Heather Kirksey, the VP of Community and Ecosystem Development. Um, just a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, attendees will be muted during the presentation. However, there's an open Q&A window, so please feel free to type in your questions at any time. Um, we have reserved time after the presentation to address those questions, and some of the questions may be answered in real time via typed responses uh, from a, a team of uh, staff and cops here um, at the Linux Foundation. So without further ado, um, I will go ahead and turn the time over to Arpit. Thank you, Jill. And uh, good morning, good evening, um, and thank you for joining. Um, I'm going to cover three very important topics for networking and edge. Uh, the first is all focused around the new normal, um, but at the same time, I want to highlight all the progress that has happened, um, and then uh, focus all the attention on what we need to do as a community in 2020 and beyond, and what to expect from uh, the Linux Foundation networking and edge communities. Uh, so without anything, any further ado, let me just start off by uh, going into the first part, which is we are here and we acknowledge the reality uh, and the new normal. We are here as a community working together, but the thing that we have to realize is the work we do now is more important than ever before as we are in quarantine and, and stay home and, and kind of work to meet a common goal, you can see the stats that are getting published by majority of our uh, carriers globally, right? Whether it's uh, the traffic patterns, uh, the workload changes, right? Gaming, VPN, videos, et cetera. Uh, my favorite obviously is the fact that the voice minutes have gone up. Um, you know, kids now cannot complain that it's just for parents to talk on the phone. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, what's more important is transactions have gone up, upstreams have gone up. Um, and in this extraordinary period of history, uh, not only it's the traffic, traffic patterns and the workload, but Forbes puts it very well. The telecom industry is proving essential in the response. So you know, how do we do, what do we do is clearly, uh, you know, very important to not just us, but the, the world as a whole. And in this battle, uh, the two key technologies identified, obviously, 5G and Edge, right? Not counting today's existing networks that have, uh, that have stayed up very well, right? Thanks to all of the hard work that this community and, and a large global population have done. But what I want to point out here is that as we look ahead, uh, there are industries and markets and applications that are going to come up and that have already started uh, showing up, right? Whether it's in the healthcare area, whether it's in the engineering area, manufacturing area, uh, or in any of these uh, areas where uh, edge computing and lower latency through 5G is extremely important as a lot more IoT devices come up. And we have to embrace the change of you know, open ecosystem that externalizes innovation. And again, I want to call out Forbes for calling it very well. And uh, this is the new world we are in. So um, what we wanted to do here was to sort of show you what we are doing and what our projects are doing and what we as a community are doing. I'm just representing all the hard work from all of you uh, here so that people can understand and uh, see the see the progress. For those of you who have not been familiar with Linux Foundation and just heard about us, here's a 20 second overview. We're much more than Linux, obviously. Um, we uh, create shared uh, investment uh, and search software uh, that allow some of the world's greatest markets and problems to be solved whether it's in security, networking, cloud, uh, automotive, blockchain, edge, web, AI, film, et cetera, et cetera. And we are host to over uh, 240 projects. And the biggest thing is, you know, we bring almost 40,000 developers together uh, in the variety of these projects. So today we'll be focusing obviously on uh, 
networking and edge, but at the same time, there's a lot more beyond that that is important to our ecosystem. So what are we doing to support our community? Uh, there are three things I want to highlight. One is uh, there are things that are getting done at the Linux Foundation level in terms of initiatives. For example, uh, our Open Networking and Edge Summit in April has now you know, moved to fall, obviously for, for travel restrictions and things like that. Um, we are expanding uh, you know, training. Uh, there are several training courses, uh, both free and uh, have extended discounting for uh, for some of this training. Uh, keep in mind, training is counter cyclical, right? Uh, and and we need to take advantage of retooling ourselves as individuals uh, during these tough times. Uh, so you know, Linux Foundation is stepping up its work on training. Um, obviously, there's a training website you can get to. Um, and then, of course, on mentorship, right, as companies um, uh, cannot physically hire, we have a virtual mentorship program that we not only expanded, but, uh, you know, start, restarted with uh, to over 12 uh, internships this summer. Uh, and the most important and to me, the most exciting is uh, there's a lot more new projects coming in on networking and communications that give us the ability to provide, you know, a lot more value to our community. So that's at the Linux Foundation level. At the LF Edge and LF Networking level, uh, as, you, as you are already on, uh, and again, by the way, I want to thank you for your tremendous response on, on, on today's webinar. There's, there's a huge community of participants here, so thank you. Uh, but this webinar series is, is one of many, and you know, we'll continue doing that. Uh, several webinars have been completed. We even do, did a EdgeX a virtual hackathon, uh, which is quite interesting. There's a lot of training that's going on if you're new to Edge and AI and, and IoT. And then on the networking side, uh, there are several courses, you know, several free, several discounted, uh, you know, whether it's SDN, whether it's 5G, or whether it's just DevOps training for a network engineer, right? All of these courses, along with certification on, you know, projects like ONAP, they're all coming on. And, and one of the things that uh, we just did last week in, in real time was we just completed um, a set of virtual LFN technical meetings, uh, which really brings developer community together. Uh, and uh, I, 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 you know, instead of me talking about it, I would like to welcome Heather, who kind of was the architect behind this meetings and, and logistics. So uh, just give us a flavor on, you know, what happened, how things went, what did you you folks do as developers came together virtually across LFN. Very cool. Thanks, Arpit, and uh, hello to everyone. Um, yeah, as Arpit uh, said, uh, when we decided to postpone the in-person uh, ONES uh, LA, the developer community uh, and technical community felt that they still needed to get together, even if virtually, to advance the important work that we're doing. And so last week we held our very first uh, virtual uh, developer event and it was uh, quite successful and went very well. Uh, we welcomed participants uh, from ONAP, CNTT, and OPNFV uh, to come together for a three-day virtual event um, and in sort of the quote unquote shared uh, accessible time zones available. Uh, we had more than 500 people registered and uh, 370 attendees. Uh, one really cool thing about these events too is that we did have a number of first time attendees who were able to attend because of this accessibility of the virtual event. Uh, we were able to do a lot of collaboration and move the work forward. To be honest, we weren't really sure how a virtual event would work for a really high touch, high collaboration uh, type of environment, but it went really well. The community stepped up. Um, we had really good and interesting content and discussions. Uh, great job of everyone pulling together to figure it out uh, as a collaborative community. And I you know, really could not be more pleased with how it went. Uh, so far uh, on our survey results, uh, we've got uh, more than 83% sort of saying that they thought the event uh, merited a four or five, uh, both in terms of content and in the overall event itself, which I think is great. And we have an upcoming event in June. And so I really recommend for everyone 
on the call who's technical or for your technical teams that you work with, that you encourage them to participate both in the planning of that event and in the uh, participation and presentation of um, discussion and material. You know, developers coming together is how we get our work done uh, as an open source community and it was really great to to see everyone uh, all the all the smiling faces that I love to see at events even if it was only through you know zoom video so um, it's really great that we're still able to do this and uh, I'll turn it back over to you Arpit. Well thank you Heather and you know it, it this, this has clearly made us all realize that as engineers, work is the greatest form of distraction. And I think uh, that's what we have seen here uh, in the events. And I'll show you some stats on, on the community progress as there's a lot more participation and contribution in these tough times. So thank you for keeping it up. Uh, with that said, and with that background, let me move into some of the great work that the community has done and what we are announcing today. So there are three big major announcements uh, in terms of press releases, which I wanted to highlight. Uh, the first one obviously is around LF networking, uh, which really has uh, accelerated its focus on you know, 5G, edge, and cloud native readiness as projects expand, community expands. Um, in reference to that, uh, obviously there is a new project that I'll talk about that has come to the Linux Foundation, and obviously over time, and be uh, going through its lifecycle management to LF networking. Uh, and so we're really excited about that. I'll talk, that, I'll talk about that in a bit. The second big announcement is the fact that uh, all of the telcos and service providers, as they come together, uh, they have stepped up the uh, focus on cloud native in parallel uh, to what we are already doing uh, as the number one challenge that the team wants to solve is interoperability and deployment. And so this is all the work that CNTT is doing and LF, with LFN, GSMA, um, all the compliance and verification work that's happening in OVP uh, and OPNFV, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, as uh, the phase two of these projects launch uh, focused on the cloud native aspects. And then finally, the press release uh, that, that highlights the LF Edge expansion uh, with obviously new projects, new members, and more importantly, you know, in the deployment milestones, right? As, um, as these um, uh, projects reach a level of maturity where people are starting to use it in real time in real networks. Uh, and obviously we are welcoming, you know, CrowdBring, Federated Wireless, Bloom, Ori, Tensor, Warrior, and Atray to the uh, LF Edge community. So let me, let me walk through a couple of new projects and then the community itself. Uh, the first project uh, that now is um, a part of LF, our Linux Foundation, is called XG Villa. Uh, XG Villa is an open source cloud native pass uh, or platform as a service for applications and uh, you know XNFs for a lack of a better word. Um, it's again used to accelerate the design development for telco related services. Uh, the great work uh, that uh, you know uh, came from uh, the seed con contributions coming from China Mobile and a set of global ecosystem partners, uh, but working very closely with a set of open standards. All of the open source work that has gone on in both Kubernetes and ONAP, as well as kind of the CI CD work that will happen, blueprint work that will happen in OPNF via Crano and the CNCF organization. So we're very excited to welcome this project to the Linux Foundation. Uh, for those of you who want to participate in it, uh, just go to the XGVilla website and just keep, click the subscribe button. Um, obviously, it stands for uh, sale in Latin, and it's also a constellation. The second project I want to welcome is uh, for LF Edge, uh, and this is a very exciting project. Uh, called Open Horizon. Uh, obviously, the seed contribution is from IBM. Uh, but more importantly, this is it's a project that's an application and meta delivery management platform. Now, there's a lot of words and, and a lot of um, you know, acronyms here, but for those of you who understand this, you know, it's a it's a very simple policy mechanism to secure uh, and deliver these workloads to a whole set of heterogeneous ed edge nodes. And that's kind of a simplistic way of saying it. But the real value is really can you can actually do these and model this across 
you know, just a single device or a whole bunch of nodes, uh, even 10,000 or greater. Um, the good news with these projects and specifically Open Horizon is it has been uh, collaborating already with the rest of the LFH projects, whether it's Edge Foundry, our Glossary project or our Home Edge project. So we welcome these two projects under the under the umbrella and uh, you know really excited and if you want to participate again please please go to the web page and, and join as far as the two communities are concerned uh, lf networking again for those of you who are not familiar with lf networking it hosts some of the top uh, networking projects almost you know eight out of ten globally um, and it it kind of focuses on a lot of things uh, for the networking stack uh, both telecom service providers and enterprise. Uh, we saw a pretty good member growth, obviously, even in tough times. So thank you very much to all the new members that are joining in. Um, clearly, the share of voices is, is, is gone up a year over year. But the thing that I'm really very excited about is the uh, deployments and the commercial products. There's a huge support of uh, projects like ONAP, OPNFE, Open Daylight, et cetera, uh, that have moved into the commercial deployment uh, in real time. Uh, and some of the traffic uh, uh, handling that you saw that at least in the US uh, AT&T was able to do, for example, was directly a result of the network automation uh, that they have put in. Um, and then if you look at training, uh, just a networking specific training, you know, 28,000 enrollments, right? So really, really positive. Uh, please do take a look and, and upskill yourself, right? These are really good courses that, uh, that have really helped our engineers to sort of uh, take their skills to the next level. And then uh, obviously with a, a metric that I personally look at almost every week, and that's the developer engagement. Uh, here's just one example, which is an ONAP high velocity project uh, just from sort of January through, uh, through now. And you can see the steady increase as the Frankfurt release is cooking, if you may, um, you know, pardon my uh, analogy but that's kind of you know food food and staying home is all we are doing along with work uh anyway so this is really good news here on uh, on the lf networking if you go to the lf edge community we have got a similar picture here uh 25 percent new member increase year over year uh, uh lots of projects in the pipeline as the unified edge community comes together uh, to help solve the most important problem in the edge, which is, you know, how do you bring a life cycle and unify, uh, you know, the cloud markets and the telecom markets and the cloud edge and the IoT markets, et cetera, through simple frameworks that can work across the stack. Uh, it is moving into deployments. Uh, and then obviously as seen by either downloads, so EdgeX Foundry, for example, hit 4.3 million downloads and Acreno, has crossed 14 blueprints, which are really a path to uh, deployment. Uh, developers have seen a lot of increase also in all the projects and code participation has seen an increase. So again, please keep it up. As I said, work and contribution to open source is the greatest form of distraction in these tough times. And we are seeing that with the metrics. So with that said, let me focus on what to expect in 2020 um, and beyond. Let's start off with LF networking and LF Edge in terms of standards and projects. Uh, for those of you who have been part of the community for over three years now, uh, you know, I had presented a version of this stack diagram almost three years ago at ONS. It used to be called ONS at that time. And it was a lot more complicated. It was a lot more projects. And what we are starting to see in networking is some of the critical projects are, are shaping up well with the growth in community. Um, all, obviously, the green ones are what Linux uh, Foundation, Linux Foundation Networking host. Um, uh, and then, of course, you know, uh, Kubernetes and CNCF is, is LF, uh, which we collaborate. And then, of course, OpenStack is right there. Um, and we're starting to see a lot more collaboration with um, uh, the open hardware organizations, specifically Open RAN, uh, Open Compute, TIP, et cetera. Um, and then uh, the standards that have stepped up in this end-to-end uh, -end solutions are, are also moving very, very uh, quickly. Uh, from an edge perspective, 
Uh, this is obviously uh, an important slide to uh, make sure that people understand that not everything is edge. Edge is defined by you know, proximity, responsiveness, and mobility. And we have projects like State of the Edge now as part of um, uh, LF Edge uh, and the Glossary Project that have really defined um, and, 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 and laid out what the different types of uh, terminologies and edge functions are. But the good news is all of these verticals are very active to take advantage of the edge compute infrastructure and applications that are coming up in our LF edge project. So what are they now and what are the use cases? And I think this is a very important part of the presentation because um, I wanna make sure that we take a step back and look at it from a big picture perspective. Um, You've seen this diagram before. Some of you may have, you know, the mobile residential small business and enterprise who have data centers, et cetera, uh, bring into an access network, into an edge and into a core cloud, right? Classic left to right. Um, and some of these projects on where they are focusing on, right? Whether it's ORAN at the uh, access part of the telecom network or home edge uh, from an edge perspective, the residential, um, you know, in constrained environment on Fledge or Eve, um, and then moving up the stack here. Uh, we host projects at the Linux Foundation, and, you know, we work with the community to come up with uh, software that can go into products, that can be deployed, and people like you who are on the call and a lot more can make money out of it, invest, and then the cycle repeats itself. You've seen this cycle from our executive director, Jim Zemlin, all the time. And so I wanna make sure that you realize that you know, every project follows this cycle. And I'm pleased to report we are in the deployment and profit phase as a lot of contracts are being awarded for, um, for vendors and system integrators that are participating in, in open source projects like ONAP or, or others, right? So first of all, let me, let me show you how we view the use cases. And these are real problems that open source projects are solving. So this is the edge use cases, okay? Uh, I'm gonna start from the left and go to the right. Uh, start off with a very simple uh, anomaly detection and home surveillance. Those are the big use cases that the home edge project is focusing on. You go down, uh, this is the on-prem edge virtualization engine, right? IIoT, and this is DevOps at scale, really for on-prem devices. And the key here is they may or may not have full connectivity, right? It, they could be partial, they could be intermittent, uh, but how do you make sure that the IoT device scales and works there from a software perspective? That's Eve. <clears throat> Move up a step, Fledge, right? One of the LF Edge projects. Um, again, focusing on predictive maintenance, condition-based monitoring, whether it's turbines, transformers, pumps, et cetera. Uh, in the press release today, you saw, you know, Google and, and sort of the TensorFlow uh, ML application. Um, and there's, there's some cool use cases on race cars and things that have uh, come up with edge applications and, and Fledge. And then if you look at uh, the top two, uh, they are, you know, again, stage three projects, uh, EdgeX Foundry and Acrano. EdgeX Foundry, as I said, you know, 4.3 million downloads. But again, the focus is on an IIoT framework. And now you can use it for building automation, for using it for industrial process controls. You can even use it for smart city water. Retail is a big use case that um, you know, has, been, has been pushed and promoted in the edgex foundry land. Very, very important. Uh, and then Acrano, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that project, brings two very important things. It brings a set of telecom or telco edge uh, uh, solutions and blueprints. Uh, whether it's radio edge cloud, network cloud, et cetera, which is basically saying, how do I uh, put software in a base station or a smart central office that will be automated and connected end to end, right? For enabling edge applications. And then it also brings vertical edge application blueprints like a connected vehicle or an augmented reality classroom that, um, that can be used these days for uh, for uh, for amplifying the experience, right? Um, and then, of course, it has the enterprise edge cloud automation blueprints, uh, you know, with with uh, Kubernetes or 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 you know, with private LTE, etc. So a lot of good progress has been made on blueprints on the LF edge side. Uh, clearly, take a look at these; uh, they are all documented under the wiki, um, and and we'll get to the uh, the, the points there. 
Um, a, a quick note on the blueprints. Uh, how do you enable deployment of use cases? How do you enable faster deployment? And that's what this is showing, right? Which is, it's a declarative configuration. It's, it's basically saying, I have this use case, I'm gonna you know, integrate this, and I'm gonna automate the testing and scripting of those you know, stacks and products and configurations, and I'm gonna open source it. So basically we're moving the interoperability and the testing in open land, if you may. So it's not just open source software, it's also open interoperability that, that Acrano focuses on, both at the device edge level and the infrastructure edge level, end to end. Very, very important. Now let's get to networking. And let's get to LF networking, where you know, we are now seeing a set of use cases across the horizon on um, everything starting from the left to right. Let me talk about ORAN. Uh, so as you may know, Linux, ORAN is an alliance and uh, Linux Foundation formed a partnership with ORAN some time back. Uh, we are hosting a project called ORAN SC. Since we like acronyms, uh, you know, we keep, them, keep on using them. SC stands for software community. So it's not very innovative, but you know, it's very easy to remember. So we are hosting ORAN SC uh, and their focus is very simple. 5G, ONAP end-to-end -end network slicing, quality of experience optimization, and getting white box or disaggregated hardware working in context of the lifecycle management. So that's the software releases have come out. Then if you look at ONAP, which is again with one of the largest projects we have in LF networking, uh, there are concepts of blueprints and use cases. It could be 5G, network slicing, uh, cross cloud VPN for global data centers, zero touch provisioning, closed loop automation, uh, voice over LT, voice over IMS, or virtual IMS, virtual CP, um, and very cool nomadic broadband, so, and many more. Uh, these are actual use cases and solutions that are uh, tested and manifest itself as blueprints. And then all the supporting software below is all scaled to support that. Uh, then you look at OPNFE. Um, clearly, we have uh, uh, shaped the community and the community has stepped up to uh, work very collaboratively with uh, CNTT and GSMA to allow for standardized NFVI, uh, VNF, CNF, NFVI onboarding to provide reference implementation, compliance, and, and verification. Um, and then, of course, we are collaborating outside ONAP, uh, uh, outside LF networking into the LF AI community, where you see a project called Acumos. And this is actually a very interesting um, uh, state here because network has tremendous amount of intelligence and frameworks like Acumos allow you to do real-time video analytics use case, allow you to do federated training, or just do straight integration with 5G, ORAN, ONAP, and, and kind of bring all of that to a more intelligent network, intelligent and automated network, as, as, uh, uh, as we would say. And then, of course, at the bottom, a uh, couple of most important, you know, OpenStack and Kubernetes, right? This is where the multi-cloud and the hybrid deployment of telecom services come in, and extreme collaboration is happening as we speak. So how does LF networking enable faster deployment, right? Just like Acrano and Blueprints is doing it for LF Edge, uh, the whole OVP program is doing it for LF networking. And for those of you who are not familiar with how this works, on the left you see uh, the stack, so infrastructure, NFVI, the virtual infrastructure manager, WIM as we call it, the orchestrator and VNFs, right? Different vendors, different nano solutions, different lifecycle management, different onboarding. Uh, what the uh, CNTT phase one has done through GSMA specification projects are the first phase has been published with OpenStack as a WIM and all the onboarding guidelines have been integrated and now OPNFE and OVP, they're all doing the testing and, and scripting and all that stuff. Today's announcement also includes the start and launch of the phase two work that is going on in the community. That includes the phase two of CNTT, which is focusing on cloud native. Uh, and that is in collaboration with the CNCF work that has, has happened. Uh, plus, 
um, there is a project. Uh, so ONAP has a work stream started called ONAP Cloud Native, which uh, again, the TSC chair, Catherine is leading. Uh, that is also happening in the, um, in, the, uh, in the wiki, if you want to join and participate on that. And as we move to phase two, you know, how do you get to a hybrid VNF and CNF environment? And how do you get to faster deployment? So very, very exciting things happening in the land of LF networking to speed up deployment. Remember, that's kind of our main goal here. And so if you look at the uh, summary of what we have just discussed and what's happening in 2020 across open networking and edge, the most important today, you know, it's kind of picked up in the last six months is really the deployment focus. So projects are mature now. How do you deploy it? How do you enable use cases through solutions and blueprints? Both LF networking and LF edge are really, really focusing on that. And our vendors, uh, system integrators, and our end users have stepped up to help on that, right? Through the developer community. The second important thing that I want to highlight is the markets are intersecting. And what I mean by that is because of 5G, because of network automation, and because of edge computing, uh, the various classic mindset we had, oh, this is telecom, and this is, uh, uh, this is enterprise, and this is cloud, and, and things like that, you're starting to see the lines blur. And the biggest benefits are coming from the open source community as these projects do interoperability through working group, through blueprints, right, end to end, as I showed. Um, and whether that could be, uh, you know, um, uh, Kubernetes and, and its solutions or Hyperledger from a blockchain perspective as they focus on uh, the telco use cases which require trust, right? So there are white papers on, on both sides that have come on. So we are encouraging and accelerating cross-domain technology collaboration and you will see a whole bunch of white papers coming out, uh, whether it's on deployment, whether it's on consumption, whether it's on guides, et cetera, et cetera. So don't you know, miss out on those things to educate yourself and obviously contribute. And then, as we said in the press release, uh, there's a heavy focus on, on cloud native, uh, primarily uh, to sort of make sure that we have a hybrid deployment uh, as we move uh, the cloud and the telecom networks together, uh, both at the core and the, at the edge level. Okay. So again, that is a quick summary of what we wanted to talk about. Uh, we wanted to leave tw plenty of uh, time for question and answers. So I think, as Jill said, put question and answers in your Q&A window, and we will answer live on, 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 on the Zoom call. But more importantly, uh, here's a call to action. Since you all uh, joined the, the webinar, you know, I would like you to get a Linux Foundation ID. There's a link. Visit the wikis, both networking and edge. And then just join the workflows that are relevant to you, right? Whether you can, you know, whether it's project meetings or events like this, or writing documentation, putting in requirements, answering questions, you know, building software, um, providing feedback. All right. If nothing else, just talk about what you're doing, right? People, you you will be surprised that you're not the only one with the problem. It's the same problems all over the place. And this is why open source has gone to a level that we would not have imagined, which is all the problems in software, which again, I hate to use the word plumbing, but in the stack, in the plumbing layer of the software are all common. They are non-differentiated and we don't want to solve it 10 different ways. And that's where LF Edge and LF Networking is focused on. And then have the vendors differentiate on top, keep the onboarding simple, keep consistency and things like that. And then of course there are upcoming webinars, um, uh, May 12th, uh, how LF networking provides the building blocks, uh, some good. And then of course we will announce these uh, future dates, uh, very interesting topics. Uh, please don't worry, forget to sign up. With that, um, here's the Twitter handler and the wikis. I am going to open it up for questions. Jill, if you can, um, please uh, read out the questions uh, since I can't see the Q and A. Yeah. So uh, we did get one question in, um, how do CNTT and OVP, how can they be leveraged uh, with LF edge? Uh, that's a good, good question. Um, so there are, 
two, uh, two ways to do that. Uh, the, as, you, as you know, CNTT and GSMA, the way we have uh, you know, collaborated or set up the collaboration, and just remember this, right? LF and Linux Foundation, we do software and we collaborate with the specifications bodies and SDOs as we call it, whether it's SE, GSMA and all that. So the setup is, is, is already there in place. Uh, whether it's for Etsy's MEC initiatives or for GSMA focusing on uh, some of the edge work that they are doing. Um, the first one obviously is to make sure that uh, as the specifications and as uh, documents are created, um, it, they are brought into the LF Edge community through the TAC um, and, and through, the, uh, uh, through, the, through the governing bodies that we have set up uh, for that particular domain. And then uh, Acreno probably is going to be the project by which uh, it will kind of uh, collaborate and work together because that's focusing on those blueprints and solutions together. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the high level answer. Uh, we can take specific answers through an email, obviously. Uh, what else? Um, I wanted to open it up to see if Heather might have some additional comments on that one. I know she works very closely with CNTT. Sure. Yeah, I was just going to say that with NCNTT, um, in terms of the two um, sort of high level work streams, the VM and OpenStack based one and the cloud native one, uh, CNTT is looking at sort of edge considerations for the common NFVI and certainly doing that um, in concert uh, with, with LF Edge. And I know there are certainly a, large number of common members between uh, Acrino and uh, CNTT, for example. So, um, you know, they're, they, CNTT is looking at sort of the edge as an extension sort of of the core as well. And so um, I think that there's a lot of work for all of us to do um, yes. in conjunction. But as we start getting requirements into RC documents, obviously that's the way that things can get translated into um, OVP and OPNF. Yep. And keep in mind, uh, you know, the telecom edge, which again, we're talking about here, is one of the many uh, markets, if you may, that LF edge addresses, right? There is a whole cloud edge, there is a whole uh, enterprise uh, sort of mindset and an I IoT mindset that is kind of getting unified, like at, at a horizontal level in LF edge. So yeah, that's good. Uh, good question. Thank you. Uh, what else? Um, are these frameworks architect independent? What type of license are they under? Uh, these frameworks uh, that we talk about, uh, specifically all the projects, they are all, all, uh, all the licenses are on the project specific web pages. Uh, most of them are on the Apache 2 license. Um, and then of course, Creative Commons on the, on the specification side. Uh, they're all open source friendly licenses as, as you would have guessed. Great. Okay. Um, so another one coming in, it looks like the cloud native world, networking world, and edge computing world are all colliding. Can you comment about strategic collaborations across CNCF, LFN, and LF Edge? Absolutely. And we have been saying this for quite some time now. Um, uh, we need to make sure that, uh, that we follow the principles of what I call the best practices of open source, which is upstream and downstream. We do not want to redo work that has happened either in the Kubernetes community or in the OpenStack community or in the various projects of LF Edge, right? Uh, and so conceptually, that is the, the, the driving principles by which collaborations happen. Uh, and so, uh, you know, if Kubernetes is viewed as an upstream community, which is part of CNCF, then downstream is a crano. And you know, give you an example, uh, Cube Edge as a, as a project that is part of CNCF is submitted a blueprint under a crano, for example, right? So that relationship happens. The governance structures uh, that we help uh, enable the collaboration is all around uh, working groups, um, special interest groups, uh, subcommittees, right? Each, the term, I mean, I'm loosely using these terms because everyone uses a slightly different word, but the concept is, Within a project, uh, a group of people get together and we at LF help create, you know, either a receiver list or a wiki page to help collaborate on, on that. Uh, we've also started seeing uh, formal uh, uh, coordinators that are assigned. For example, ONAP has assigned a formal coordinator to work with 
and CNCF uh, and Kubernetes, right, for moving to cloud native. So many, many things happening. Um, once you participate in the community, it'll be easy. Uh, I know I'm, I'm giving you so many high level answers, but there's like very, very specific ways collaboration happens. But the key is, you know, these umbrellas and these projects, each are autonomous and separate because they solve a specific example uh, or a specific area or a use case. But together, they are much stronger because they bring the use cases to life. Okay, next. Great, thanks Arpit. Um, any collaboration with ONF and BBF? Uh, yes, so we have uh, ONF, I think last year, uh, or maybe even two years ago, we had uh, uh, already announced. Um, and I think you may have seen a couple of years ago, or maybe last year, uh, CORD and ONAP had proven interoperability. Uh, so that's already happened, if you may. Uh, there is also work going on in the ORAN SC community where sort of the controllers and, and, and softwares are getting used. Um, and so that's on that side. On the uh, BBF side, um, we have not set up a formal agreement, uh, but if if there are specific use cases that you would like uh, me to personally approach them, I mean, we have, you know, the the uh, the the, ma the management and leadership at BBF and I, you know, we do we do communicate. Uh, we have not seen a request yet on, hey, you should do this to set it up, right? But I'd be happy to uh, to take that on. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Great. Um, are there any cloud providers actively participating in LF Edge to align with and interoperate with edge clouds that support proximity sensitive applications? Okay, so I will answer that question very, very strongly. <laughs> because if you look at the ecosystem on LF Edge, it consists of, uh, I would say, silicon independent players, right? So, you know, ARM, Intel, Qualcomm, etc. right? It has uh, several of these uh, telecom players, obviously, you know, at and and Equinix and NTT and, and, and others, uh, but it has very strong support from the cloud players, right? Specifically, you know, we've got Tencent and Baidu and, and some of the uh, largest of the large cloud that are using, uh, in fact, the, the connected car blueprint uh, is, is coming from a cloud to an edge uh, uh, perspective. There's a project called Beetle, that has been contributed by the cloud companies. And that's exactly what is focusing, uh, that is being, uh, that is one of the big projects for, for focusing on those, those applications. Uh, and then from a public cloud perspective, if you look at uh, the US market, uh, we are seeing uh, complementary uh, AWS um, uh, uh, work uh, with EdgeX Foundry and uh, the same with uh, the Azure. Uh, cloud as well, right? So we're seeing that as as solutions and interoperability as uh, as these markets come together. Great, thank you. Um, next question: How complementary are ONAP and open source Mano? Uh, they are actually quite complementary, and we have said that uh, several times. ONAP is about thirty one projects, uh, sub projects, I should say, uh, and it's a full stack that includes Mano as one of the pieces, but it also includes closed loop automation, uh, network analytics, um, you know, design tools, external APIs with uh, sort of the SDOs, uh, you know, TM Forum, MEF, et cetera. Uh, and it's, it's kind of the, the entire uh, uh, solution, if you may. And Mano itself is one of the pieces. And I think as, 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 as you may know, OSM is focusing primarily on the Mano uh, front. And, and so if you look at it, you know, it's a, it's a subset. ONAP is, is kind of 31 projects and MANO is one of them. Great. So this next one is for Heather. Uh, when is CNTT phase two expected to be completed? And CNTT identified the focus for phase three. So um, just really quickly, um, phase two is, is, is not sort of necessarily a term we use um, in C CNTT. We have the R1 set of work streams and the R2, which is a set of work streams. The first one being OpenStack and VM, the second being uh, Kubernetes and container uh, focused. And um, the best way to answer that is that we have a roadmap 
of things that we begin to see developing and we are expecting uh, some first releases in the, um, I assume when you say phase two, you mean the Kubernetes container-based work stream, um, that, that uh, we are expecting to have some things published uh, in September for that. But if uh, you would like to see a, a roadmap slide on that, um, I, if you want to ping me, I can point you to that. Um, also, I would expect that we'll be doing a deep dive a webinar on the topic of CNTT um, later in our webinar series too, where we can dig into that information. Um, but uh, basically sort of, you know, also that the that, that technical space is also certainly evolving rather rapidly. And so we want to stay in touch uh, with the evolution of that technical ecosystem um, as it continues to mature and develop. Great, thanks Heather. Ray, if you'd like more information on that, just uh, contact me and we can set up some time to, to go over more details. Okay, uh, next question. What all container network functions will, will come near edge in 5G? Edge should be lightweighted with minimum number of computes. What is the best practice for edge architecture designing? Uh, that's a loaded question. Um, I would say definitely look at uh, the use cases that edge is producing. You're absolutely right. Uh, that edge is not one kind of place, right? There's a physical location, uh, anything from sort of what we call devices, which is microcontrollers, sensors, to sort of gateways, to sort of on-prem, quote, data centers, uh, moving into the other side of the last mile, which is base stations and smart central offices, so, you know, basically in the 20 milliseconds of less latency. And I think the general demark point is, is kind of that, uh, about 100 kilometers or less. Um, each location and each uh, industry, if you may, have specific requirements on memory and compute and what they can allow. And they have specific requirements on the hardening, right? Uh, because uh, you know, of connectivity issues and things like that. So there's no one answer on how much is allowed or whether it's lightweight. If you have a six rack server that you can fit it into a smart central office that is in the heart of a, a, a windmill farm, guess what? It's a, you can fit a lot of things in. If you're in a remote location in a farm somewhere where you know you get intermittent connectivity, you know 256 meg may be the limit, and yes, that might be not not. In fact, you know even containers may, may be an overweight. You know you may need an RTOS with that. So, answer varies. Um, please look up the the suggestions that the LF Edge community has has uh, provided uh, for you to deploy these things in various use cases with the appropriate software and the appropriate memory and, and the software that comes with it. Okay. Okay, yeah, this, this one is for Heather. Uh, which NFVI and VNF vendors are actively engaged with CNTT? Yeah, so, um, all of the major NEPs are actively involved. Um, in fact, we've got some uh, work stream uh, chairs from uh, folks like uh, Nokia um, and um, Intel. Um, Red Hat is also uh, involved. And then we've also got um, some, especially on the cloud native side, some um, smaller innovative players like uh, Matrix and Lutza who are very active. So there is a quite vibrant uh, representation from uh, the vendor community. And I would add Heather on, on the receiving side, you know, this is a specification side on the receiving side in terms of OPNFE and the code, yeah. all the top yeah, 10 vendors. What, yeah. I was going. <laughs> <laughs> all the top 10 vendors, right, uh, yeah. are, are participating. Yeah, and I was going to say also with CNTT and OPNFE's collaboration of uh, really beginning to accelerate um, all of the traditional folks who've been active in development. Yeah, in, um, in OPNFE are participating as well. So we're really building that relationship, I think, in a, in a very healthy, uh, sustainable fashion between sort of the um, engineers and the, the architects and um, sort of and uh, deployment operations folks who are generating the requirements. So there's a, a lot of really good work there and it is very much a partnership uh, between the operators and the vendors. Cool, thank you. A uh, couple of more maybe, Jill? I, I don't yeah. know how much time we have, but. Yeah, we've just got a few minutes left. Um, okay. 
Can you say more about the collaboration between the ORAN Alliance and Linux Foundation as it relates to the ORAN software community that you mentioned? It seems like the RAN is still proprietary for the most part. How is this work going? Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, again, for those of you who are familiar with how the structure is, uh, obviously ORAN Alliance is kind of the alliance. Um, and what we have done with the Linux Foundation and ORAN Alliance is we are uh, formally supporting them with the software community, right? So that's the project ORAN SC that is hosted by the LF. Uh, so we get the specifications and the requirements and the guidance and the direction from the ORAN Alliance and the software community works to create the code that is part of the uh, RAN, right? Whether it's CUDU, all the apps, uh, de disaggregation, uh, there's a lot happening. Uh, the first release is already out. So take a look at it uh, on the ORAN SC page. Um, and and see you know what is missing and uh, again I always say on any of the LF on any of open source projects it's all about duocracy right so if you and I think Heather may have coined that term but uh, you know you come in and you work and then you will be heard right uh, it, we are not like it's not like hey I'm giving you requirements or I'm I'm solving a problem for you. We're all solving problems together. So if there's specific things on ORAN SC that you want to see, participate, right? Um, and and just, just go with that. Uh, and, and you will be surprised on how uh, helpful these developers are. All right, other, maybe one more? Sure, yeah. Um, is LF Edge supporting Kubernetes? Uh, so there are multiple blueprints. I mean, that is a very big question. There are multiple blueprints. I think I talked about a few uh, of the enterprise blueprint. There's, there's a blueprint that includes uh, the network cloud, uh, which pulls in OpenStack, for example. Uh, then there is a blueprint which has no OpenStack and only, uh, only Kubernetes, right? Uh, and you can take a look at that as well uh, for, for, those, uh, for those deployments. Uh, and then there's hybrid blueprints, and then there's blueprints that come from, and again, these are all under a Kranos wiki, so take a look at that. Uh, short answer is um, yes. And, uh, you know, uh, containers and, and Kubernetes are, are a very important piece of the edge uh, ecosystem. Any Great. Fi final burning urgent ones, or should we wrap? Uh, I think we should wrap. There were a couple of questions about some vendor specific contributions that I don't know that we are in the best position to answer. Um, but I, I think this was a good overview of questions. So thank you, everybody. Any last words from you, Arpit or Heather? Uh, I think I um, really appreciate everybody hanging in there and participating. Uh, please stay safe. And uh, as we said, participate, you know, uh, work and open source contribution is the best form of distraction in today's times. And you know, hopefully we'll see you uh, in the future in one of the next webinars or as a TSC uh, participant. Thank you. Great, and as a reminder, the uh, recording of the presentation and the slides themselves will be available shortly. And we will be sending uh, an email with links to both of those assets uh, to all of our attendees. So if you missed something, you wanna go back, uh, you will have access to the content. Thank you.